So I've put 15W40 oil in the VDJ Land Cruiser and I like it. Look, there's a lot of contention over putting thicker oil in the VDJ V8 Land Cruisers, but you know what? I've tried it out now for about 15,000 kilometers and it's way better. Maybe it's because I've got a rebuilt engine and not a factory stock engine, but I tell you what, it is producing way less blow-by, it is using way less oil, in fact it's pretty much not using any oil, and it runs and sounds just as good as it ever did, if not a little bit better. Now I was really worried about doing this, I thought putting a thicker oil in might increase my oil pressure perhaps, and that may in turn cause some of the leaking issues that I've had to either return or get worse. But look, I saw this particular Penrite oil here from Super Cheap Auto. I was in Super Cheap Auto because my regular auto shop didn't have the filters that I needed in stock. And well, this 15W40 Penrite, I, previously I was using 5W40 Penrite, it's got a picture of a VDJ Cruiser on the label. I figure, hey, if anything bad happens to my engine, that's my defense. If I'm buying something with a picture of a car with my engine in it and it doesn't work with my engine, then they've got a lot to answer for. But you know what? It's been absolutely brilliant. Normally I'd be using about half a dipstick for 5,000 Ks, if not a bit more, depending on the kind of driving. And now my dipstick is barely moving between 5,000 K services. Now I am in WA and it has been the warmer month. That was some of the other justification that I had for this. I thought to myself, well, hang on a minute. Um, I'm doing an oil change just before I'm heading up north, um, north of WA in spring, and I'm going to be towing a big load. We're going quite remote, so we're going to have a lot of supplies. It's going to be a little bit heavier than normal. We're going to be doing 700 kilometer days. I thought, you know, if there was ever a time to run a thicker oil, this is going to be the time. So I put it in and I gave it a crack. And I've been putting it in ever since. <laughs> no sponsorship here, guys, before we get all of the hate. I just saw this as I was walking through the shop and went, hey, that's a picture of a VDJ Cruiser. I've been thinking about 1540 oil. And there you have it. Was it cheap? No. Is it a mineral oil? Yes. Do I like synthetic oils? Mm, maybe. I'm not 100% sold on them. For the type of driving that I'm doing, probably okay, but for short round town stuff, I don't think they're great. I think regular oil changes on dyno oil are better, but that's for a whole nother video. All right, so let's talk about the catch can, the RC351. I put that in um, when Ryko sent it to me uh, because of the issues that I had with the 350, whether it was the 350 causing the issues or not, we'll never know because I sent the filter off to Ryko and they said they were going to test it and tell me what whether it was blocked or not and I never heard anything back. So I can only assume that it wasn't blocked because it didn't look blocked to me, but I'm not a scientist, but that's my opinion. Anyway, I've since taken the filter out of the 351 as well. I noticed more oil leaking out of probably the front timing cover, I think, after five to 10,000 Ks. And I just, that was some, where some of the oil was leaking originally. So I've just pulled the filter out. Time will tell as to whether it continues to leak or not. Maybe the damage is already done there and, and it may not be the 351 at all. But I also suspect that changing to this oil is gonna help because I am getting way less blow by it. Now, Obviously, I've got no filter in the catch can, but I, if you remember, I ran no filter in the 350 catch can for a while as well, and I was still getting a considerable amount of blow-by caught in the catch can and in the drain tube. Since I've changed the 1540, I've still got no filter in the 351, but I'm basically getting bugger all oil in the catch can drain tube. Like, it's not even worth emptying it between oil changes. So... Maybe there's something different between the 350 and the 351 design-wise that means that it's less effective without the filter in it. Although, you know, you can have a look at this video up here and um, it doesn't seem to really be that much of a difference. So I can't see that being the issue. I just think that it's got less blow-by. That would make sense because it's using less oil. So I think a lot of my oil consumption was through blow-by and now it doesn't seem to be there. So if you've got a VDJ, I'm not going to tell you to put 1540 in it, but think about it. <laughs> if you've got oil consumption issues, I definitely think about it. If you're running a thinner oil and you have no dramas whatsoever, well, 
okay, stick with what works. But if you're getting huge amounts of consumption out of your VDJ cruiser, maybe put a 15W40 oil in it. Of course, this isn't a daily. This car gets used on trips. It, it gets started up, it runs warm for long periods of time under heavy loads, and I am currently in a fairly warm climate. In the winter here, I might consider going to a thinner oil. We'll see how it goes. But because I'm not doing a huge amount of cold starts, I think this is going to work for me. If you're using yours as a daily around town, drop the kids off at school, maybe the 1540 is not as good an option for you, unless you're in Queensland or somewhere. North WA, Northern Territory, Queensland, geez, I'd be running 1540 all day long. I know Berrima Diesels did a similar video on running thicker oils in modern diesels in warmer climates, and they've got an office in the Philippines, so they know all about heat. Northern Queensland, sort of similar climate to the Philippines, so if you're up that way, I would probably be very much considering a thicker oil if you're not already running one. If you're down in Queensland or Tasmania and you're using it as a daily, well, maybe it's not a great idea. But I'm pretty happy so far. I'm about to do another trip. I've just changed the oil again. I'm going to do another 2,000 k's towing. So I'll check the consumption when I get back from there and see if it's used any oil and check the blow-by, see how much blow-by has been caught without the filter, obviously. But, well, you know, so far so good. I still have to keep an eye on that leak and see what's going on there. Hopefully that doesn't get any worse. I'm hoping it kind of just magically seals itself up now, but we'll see what happens with that. It's pretty easy to monitor anyway, because once I pull the oil filter off, the leak sort of comes right above the oil filter housing, so pretty easy one to check. Anyway, just a really short video. Um, I was just checking the oil before I go away, and I thought, hey, I want to tell you guys about this. something I want to do for a little while and haven't had the time. So hopefully this is helpful. If you like my videos, you know the drill. Hit the like, subscribe, yada, yada, and I'll see you in the next one.